Hello everyone, Tim and Game here, and today I have the pleasure to bring you another one of my The Last of Us multiplayer class guides. Now today's class guide, as you can see from the title, is called the Clint Eastwood, and the reasons for that are going to become very, very apparent as I go throughout the video. But before I decide to get into a bit of the gameplay and how I use this class, I'm going to quickly overview what I carry here. Now as you can see on the screen just for the first 15 or so seconds, this class is comprised of the revolver, which is free, there's no points cost on that. The large firearm slot is also free, so once again, no points cost there. I've got first aid training 2, which costs 4 points. The reviver 2 perk, which once again costs 3 points. The pistol auto zoom, which costs 2 points. And collector 1 in the final slot, which costs 3 points. Now, obviously, the main reason for me deciding to call this class the Clint Eastwood is because, as you can see on the screen here, this class is all about using that revolver revolver effectively. If only the revolver was called the 44 Magnum in this game, we would have the perfect Clint Eastwood class. But this entire class is designed to be set up to enable you to get the most out of your revolver and get all of your downs with this weapon because you know, one of the major interesting dynamics about the Last of Us multiplayer is the random missions that you get. So every now and again you get attacked by fireflies or there's a disease outbreak or the survivors that you need to rescue and to complete these missions you have to select a particular goal and complete it to be able to pass the mission and you know the first goals of these for example the heals or the regular nine downs they're quite easy but once you get through into like the later weeks the week 9 10 11 and 12 the missions you have to do get progressively harder and one of the easier missions you can do is the nine downs with one particular weapon so if you're looking to do the revolver challenge this is an ideal class to do because you will get 80% of your downs with the revolver obviously you're going to be getting some with equipment as well bombs molotov what have you but the key to this class is all about the revolver so obviously the revolver is your only weapon and the good thing about having only one weapon is whenever you go to a supply crate and you pick up ammo if you've got two weapons the chances are the ammo will be spread out over both of them but if you've only got one weapon in your loadout every time you get an ammo drop from a crate it will be for that weapon so if you're desperately looking to get downs with only one weapon this is a really good way to do it. Just roll with one, and then every time you get that extra ammo, it will go for the weapon that you desperately need to use to complete that challenge. So that's obviously the first point about it. However, there are some sacrifices with only carrying one weapon. Obviously, when you're just using a pistol, you're really going to lack for a little bit of long-range firepower. When you've got that semi-auto pistol combo or hunting rifle, or any other long-range weapon for that matter, you always have something better to fall back on. You get your long-range rifle out for the long sight lines, and then whenever you enter that slightly tricky close combat area, you pull your revolver out, and it's a nicely balanced class. So when you're only running one weapon, which in this case is the revolver, you're really going to have to tailor your gameplay to it and a map like high school is very very useful because the only really long sight line is the outside bit and when you go into the outside you've got to be very very careful because there's lots of windows there's lots of places people can go and hide and it's going to be very very difficult for you to check all of the corners so what i'd recommend to do is stick inside with this class and straight away that begins to negate one of the major downsides for only carrying a close quarter weapon. So straight away you're already making progress there. But the next perk that I'm going to talk about, the pistol auto zoom level 2, is another good way to help negate your disadvantage. Because like I said, with a revolver you're going to be struggling medium to long range. Partially because of the weapon itself. I mean the revolver has quite high recoil so fire management is going to be very very key over medium range. But obviously the default zoom level for pistols is relatively low. And the great thing about pistol level 2 it gives a much more improved zoom level like you can see here. You know, it's much more effective at medium range and it gives you something to fall back on. If I was running a class without this pistol auto zoom level 2, I would not have liked to take that gunfight on because it was just out of the effective range of the revolver without it. You know, the revolver is a very, very good close combat weapon, but by using pistol auto zoom on it, especially the level 2 version, it gives you that extra little bit of range so that you can take a guy out when otherwise you might have been a little bit iffy or struggling to get the accuracy of your shot. The only problem you're going to have to be really aware of when you're using this perk is the increased recoil because obviously as you zoom in further the sight shake, the scope sway, all of that is going to be a little bit more pronounced so it does take a little bit of getting used to 
But as you saw with that assist there, as long as you don't go barreling around the corner, blatting away at everything moves, and you actually have a little bit of time to aim and get a nice rhythm of shot, you can stay quite accurate up to a decent range. So that's the reason why I've taken pistol auto zoom level 2. So let's move on to the next selection. The other problem with running only one weapon is one that I've touched on briefly earlier. The fact that you're not going to have that other weapon to fall back on. Now like I mentioned this is a problem in that it doesn't give you the flexibility of engagement that a broader class would give you. However the other problem with it is you start with a lower supply of ammo because you don't have that secondary weapon with its starting supply of ammo so you do find yourself running out of ammo quite a lot with this class so the rest of the perks are designed to keep you and your teammates in the fight so the first one I've gone for is Collector 1. Now, Collector 1 gives you 10% extra parts for pretty much every action you do in the game. And as most of you guys know by now, parts are the in-game currency which enable you to buy armor, they enable you to buy more ammo and weapon upgrades. And because you've only got this one weapon, you need to be getting those parts as fast as possible to enable you to upgrade your revolver quickly. And if you find yourself a little bit low on ammo, you want those extra parts to fall back on to go into that shop Buy yourself some more ammo and keep yourself in the fight. And when you have this limited weapon, which the revolver is, that it really requires you to mould your playstyle to it. Having that little bit of extra ammo and that bit of armour gives you so much more leeway because it enables you to take on unfavourable engagements. If you can get your revolver to level 2 faster than anyone else, and if you get your armour up and you turn the corner and you see a guy with a semi-auto rifle, you know, most of the time he would take you out. However, because you're running the collector perk, because you've got your parts slightly faster, it enables you to get that early leg up in the game and it really does help you to dominate the opposition. So that's why collector is very, very very useful. So by pairing pistol auto zoom with collector not only do you give yourself a better chance in medium gunfights you gain parts a lot more quickly which enables you to upgrade your weapon faster get that armor in faster to make you even more powerful in gunfights and that results in a bit of a snowball effect you get more and more parts more and more points and you end up getting lots of supply because as you guys know as well parts converts directly into supply after the game so if you keep getting that 10% more parts throughout the game you're going to be getting more supply, you're going to keep more of your survivors alive, and that's a really, really good thing. So that's why I've gone for those two perks. Now the next two I've gone for is First Aid Training 2 and Reviver 2. And I touched on why First Aid Training 2 is so useful in the previous video, but I'll run over it again here. You know, the ability to heal your teammates for 10 health every two seconds is absolutely crucial, because you know The Last of Us is so focused on team combat. You need all of your teammates alive and well, you need them all at full health to support you and especially when you're only running a revolver you know you've got a bit of a niche class you need your teammates there to sponge a bit of damage you need them there to pick off the enemies at extreme ranges so you're filling the close combat niche here but at the same time if you can keep your teammates alive and well around you not only will they be able to you know take a bit of damage off you and make sure that you're not the only focus for the enemy they'll be able to give you support in fire they'll be able to revive you if you go down you know all of these things together are absolutely key and the choice of reviver 2 for my final perk really does fill into the support role of this class as well so not only do you have the ability to heal teammates when they're up if they do go down you have that 45% faster revive but all also, the teammates you get up spawn back with 25 more health than if you just had the basic revive. So this is very, very useful. If you're in a gunfight and you manage to get around the corner and the teammate's down just as you head around that corner, you can quickly revive him with more health, give him a quick patch up with a first aid training and get straight back into conflict and surprise the enemy because you know the enemies in this game if they know you're very very low on health and they aren't they will rush around a corner and if you can very very quickly revive a guy or patch him up a little bit it really does enable you to get the jump on your opponent and win gunfights that otherwise you would lose fairly comfortably because you know weapons in the last of us do quite a lot of damage you know you can be downed in three shots by a number of weapons there's no health regeneration as well so that does encourage people to be a little bit more aggressive when they know they're on top if you run around the corner and a guy's put several shots onto you chances are he's going to be following around pretty sharpish so if you get that extra couple of heals in that might enable your teammate to survive that one extra bullet before going down and in a game like the last of us that extra half a second that would give you is a massive bonus and i nearly completely balls up here you can see <laughs> the guy's duking me i'm trying to shoot him 
He ends up running around the corner, and you can see exactly what I mean here. You know, I know this guy's really low on health, so I'm rushing after him. I want to make sure that he doesn't get away. And if he had a teammate there with first aid training to quickly patch him up and catch me by surprise, they would have been able to get a kill there very, very easily. So immediately you see the benefit there. And don't forget as well, because you've got that collector perk on, every time you heal a teammate, you're going to be earning 10% more parts. And those more parts are going to be able to buy you more ammo or buy you armor or buy you a faster revolver upgrade which enables you to kill more opponents and get more parts and you begin to see the snowball factor take over and this gameplay is a very good example of that happening you know i got a good start i got my revolver upgrades early got some ammo in when i was running low got that armor upgrading to increase my survivability kept a couple of teammates alive so i got a little bit more supply so i could buy more ammo again and begin to really push forward and the final score is 15 downs, 13 executions, one death, and one revive. So you know, this is a really, really good game on a map which is very, very suited to this class. So if you're having a little bit of trouble on high school, I really do recommend running this class a couple of games and seeing what you think about it. Because as long as you use it well, and as long as you stick with your teammates, you can absolutely dominate people. Because the revolver is a deadly close range weapon and the very very good thing about it as well is it's so powerful that if you have a guy come up and swing a one hit melee at you and you shoot him it actually delays the animation so as long as you keep shooting the guy when he's rushing at you you will stagger him he'll be unable to melee you and you can blat a guy down very very easily as you saw there so guys thank you so so much for listening to the video i hope you've learned something and i hope you've enjoyed it so once again thanks for watching and have a great day